whenever you're ready, buddy. Okay, great. So uh, obviously I do a lot of different things. I'm involved in a lot of different areas. Um, I have an influencer network. Uh, you know, when I put this deck together, we were maybe like third or fourth in the US. Now we're number two in the world in terms of overall size. So the, the influencer network has really grown. I have more and more data to kind of back up what I've put into this. Uh, I do, I still do a lot of uh, uh, ORM consulting. And then of course, you know, I, I leak to that. Uh, I'm helping to run the advanced search summit for anyone that wants to go to that. Now, what I, I have here that I want to talk about today, I hear, okay. hey. Is that a dog barking or? Okay. Anyways, uh, so uh, what I have here is how to go about, you know, putting together a profitable PBN using primarily free tools and influencer networks. Obviously, a lot of people in this world, in the black hat world especially, they they have PBNs for breakfast. It's really not a big deal. Uh, there's going to be some specific points I want to hammer home. And I realize that it might be kind of a slow buildup. So I'm going to go through the first part relatively quickly and then focus more on the latter half. So I'm just going to go ahead and kick into it. Uh, I've been around for a long time, since 1997. Um, I could probably put in here hundreds of thousands of domains at this point and lots and lots of clients. I get to do a lot of fun stuff. So uh, I, I wanted to separate it into two different tracks. There is how you could approach things as a white hat and how you could approach things is essentially not quite as white. I don't think any of this is particularly dirty. Uh, we did test this out ourselves. We made uh, some a little bit of money with a small network of 12 domains just to make sure that we weren't completely full of shit. Um, when we put this deck together, uh, I was uh, very sleep deprived. And so my, uh, my designer thought he would troll me throughout the entire deck with little thought clouds. So that's what's going on there. Um, there are uh, some relatively straightforward steps that takes place as you're creating a PBN. No matter how you're looking to do it, you have to figure out what niche you're going to you're going to be in or niche. You're going to get the domain, you know, find it, buy it, host it. Make sure you have email set up. You have a theme for for sake of simplicity, and we just have WP Engine on. So get a WordPress theme. Uh, pick your plugins. Figure out your site architecture. Get some content. Get those initial baseline links, expansion links over time. Get a little traffic create a persona that looks real, get on some social accounts to build that persona, make it even more real, grow it even more, add e-commerce, do user testing, uh, test out some subscription revenue models, uh, you know, trip campaigns to try to convert people, get into the influencer networks, create some offers, handle the traffic and the transactions, uh, do some sharing, use sweeteners to make your deals even better, amplify, you know, basically get to the point where you're selling your PPI. A lot, a lot of steps. Some of this is very easy. Some of it's uh, a little easier said than done. Let's start. When when I am determining a niche, I like to look at two different tools. I like to look at Ahrefs and SpyFu. And the reason I look at these two tools is I like to look at the intersection between what the commercial value of different industries seems to be from the fat head to the long tail. And then I like to look to see like how difficult is it going to be actually to be in those uh, just looking at the underlying uh, link support that exists. You know, it, it, it is easier said than done. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys crank this out constantly. But you know, the more times I do it, the more I find opportunities that I would have over otherwise missed. If you're, you know, uh, a little short on time or you just want a quick a black hat version, you can just try a niche laboratory. You plug in, you know, the categories of the influence networks that you ultimately want to join later down the road and try to find something that's a rough comparative match, and then you're done. Then what you're going to do is you're going to need to find the actual domain. Um, you know, so provided that you're not purchasing a drop or an existing build domain. Um, I like using GoDaddy for checking on domain availability, but I purchase that name cheap now almost exclusively. Um, if you're uh, going a little bit again, Black Hat, you could use something like Freenom. Uh, there are, you know, this is the free alternatives. If, if this is like, a, if you're going the throw rail route, it really doesn't matter. You could use something like this, this is the churn and burn. Of course, again, you're going to buy. 
Uh, I like privacy and uh, Namecheap's pretty great with the privacy. I don't have any affiliation with them. It just, they've saved me a lot of headache uh, in the past. Uh, once Moniker got bought, that was a nightmare transition for us. So I do anything I can to take business away from Moniker at this point. Uh, again, on the, the purchasing side of things, if you chose the Black Hat method, please use Freenom. Um, that, that's fairly straightforward. When it comes to hosting the domains, uh, there, there's a lot of great stuff out there. The uh, Namecheap has a pretty good uh, WordPress hosting package available for a little under $9 a year that works. Uh, otherwise, we, we host a lot of stuff on uh, uh, Rackspace. Um, if, if you're looking for down the road to try to figure out how to way to maximize your overall dollars, you could try to uh, use uh, HostGator to get some of its AdWord credits and then use that for the paid traffic acquisition later on. Uh, if you're Black Hat, you know, you're, you're just looking for cheap, right? So uh, one of the cheaper solutions that I found that, I, it, that seems to work okay was uh, webhosting.ninja. Um, there's a couple other ones that, you know, they, they kind of come and go. That's the hard part. You never know how reliable they're going to be. Nanohost.me was decent. Um, they have some good discounting plans on Black Hat World if you don't want to go deep on, on that world itself. I mean, again, they're like there seems to be new ones all the time. There, you, you can go really hardcore, and you know, you have your own servers. Um, but like for testing something out, there's no need to to put a lot of cash into this. Uh, when you go about setting up the email, again, um, I tend to use the, the the default hosting stuff that comes with like a, a Namecheap or a Rackspace. Uh, otherwise, you can just use G Suite, which I hate because it's Google, but it is uh, pretty useful and straightforward. Um, if you're going dark, you're probably just using a, a throwaway email anyways. Um, so, you know, just use a Gmail. That's not a problem at all. Then we get into the part where we're actually starting to, to pay attention to the site itself. Um, I, I do like Theme Forest. Uh, there's some great ones in here. Um, you can already kind of tell, like, what niche we selected for the particular test we ran. It was in the supplements world. So we were, we we're looking at some, uh, some templates of dudes that have the kind of body that I will never in my life have, just totally ripped. So that, that's over on, on Theme Forest. Pick one that kind of matches the niche that you like, make it easy for yourself. Or, you know, if you're black, you're just going to rip off someone else's theme and host it. You know, pretty easy. Uh, in terms of plugins, I don't think it's necessary to get too crazy here. Even if you're um, going uh, the clean version where you want it to last a long time, something like WP Super Cash, uh, we put on some just uh, basic Yoast, and on one of them we put on a premium Yoast uh, a plugin. It it doesn't really need a whole lot. It's just a PPM. It's just some basic content. Um, if if you're Black Hat again, you know it's freemium Yoast is probably good enough just to make sure that you're you're handling your uh, your page redirects and what you want to have indexed or not indexed. For uh, site architecture and determining like you know what kind of pages need to exist. What kind of uh, uh, phrasing are you going to be tackling? Uh, part of that goes back to our initial analysis, looking at Ahrefs and SpyFu. Um, you can go a little deeper, you know, taking the top couple of competitors, digging on it to try to like distill down. Okay, these are the 50 pages that need to exist on this site over the next, uh, you know, 12 months. And from there, you, you can pretty much handle it all still within Ahrefs, looking at their competing pages and content gaps. Uh, if if you're black hat, you're probably just scraping something and throwing it back up on someone else's site. So you know, use whatever scraping tool you like. I went really old school with this in Xenu. I, I wonder if anyone even still uses it besides me. For content, um, I I have evolved when it comes to content. Um, we went a little bit higher scale on the white hat test. Uh, so copy press, uh, we were able to get it for 15 cents a word. It might be a little bit more expensive for you if you go through copy press. Um, I am still tightly affiliated with Dave Snyder, so you know I got a deal. Um, but that's what we used on the white hat for the content creation. Um, for black hat, we're like, okay, we can get 500 words for two DACA dollars. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, search engine ways. Um, uh, as a, was a vendor that we used on Black Hat World to get that going. Um, again, you know, some of these guys are dime a dozen. Uh, that dude seems to have been around for a while, though, and has a pretty decent system and setup for, for getting what you need. And it really wasn't that bad. 
I mean, you know, as we talk about how you know, AI content uh, uh, creation is going to get bigger, sure, okay, I guess. But, you know, this seemed like it wasn't totally spun, but it had the sense of it maybe being spun by, like, ESL individuals, but it still worked. Um, then we started to get into, like, more strategy, uh, getting the baseline links. And so uh, what, I, what I consider baseline links is, like, Links that someone's going to look at, and they're not going to question it. They're not going to say, "Oh, this is obviously bought." I mean, you're not you're not going to go out and immediately get a, a Forbes article, an Inc. article, and other crap that every other uh, uh, link seller sells you. Just get it, get something basic. Um, Marketer Center has a lot of good services. One of the ones that we used on the PBN test is their Authority Builders package. That worked just fine. On, on the Black Hat one, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it Black Hat, but what we ended up doing was use uh, the Web 2.0 Rankers uh, authority links. Uh, it was just a little lower quality, but it was also a little bit less money. So it, it, it's a trade-off. I think you could you could use these later on on your on your uh, your cleaner PPNs, just if you need a little additional uh, uh, benefit without um, trying to overly interlink your uh, your network. I mean, it, it's the typical stuff. I mean, uh, th this is like rewinding to 2005. You know, you're getting some GovEDU links and you know uh, some PDF audio video. You're just not overdoing it. This is just some initial baseline stuff. Then you're gonna want to start planning for the expansion. Again, I, I stuck with Copy Press on it, and there's a reason for it. Um, I consider them a partner of ours, so I know that they're not cheap. They're not fast. It's just something that I can set and forget them. So we, we, we basically said, Here, here's the, the budget on this. I think it was like, I think it was like 500 bucks a link uh, for this particular thing. So we didn't want to do too many of them. And just, it kind of just went off and did its thing. Uh, for the, the Black Hat version of it, uh, we used ADSS 30. Um, they were good on the, uh, on the link packages. We later went back and did a, a Wikipedia project that was a complete disaster. So don't use them for Wikipedia, but use them for links. Just you know, making sure that everything is, is straightforward. They they had um, a health niche as one of their packages of links, and since we we're uh, pumping up some supplement sites, we wanted to, to make sure that you know it was at least relatively uh, uh, related. And then for immediate traffic, you're like, why do you want to get immediate traffic? You you want to you want these things to look real, so that anyone that's investigating like checks off a lot of little boxes on their checklist. So like the easiest way out there is like you use you buy some penny traffic. You want to get real traffic though. But you don't you don't want it to be ultimately garbage, especially if you're doing like the white hat version. So you can create a penny campaign in Facebook. I mean you could. You could up maybe not white hat to say this like but you could upload a huge list of emails and run it as a uh, um, a retargeting campaign still. So you could it, it's not going to convert probably, but it you know primes the pump in the stats. Otherwise, you can go to Fiverr. You know now uh, you can get a little bit better of a deal on legit uh, the the two i l e g i i t um, for same type of traffic. It, it looks like it's bounce bot traffic. But it's super cheap. So if you're just looking to for something that makes it look like there's a spike of traffic, someone's doing uh, some SEMrush uh, background checks, at least it won't be a, a goose egg. Then you're going to need to start building out the personas because ultimately um, these PBNs are going to be attached to people. This is really important. Now uh, most PBNs that I come across, you don't know who. Who is running it, right? Now, obviously, it's just a guy in an office like me, right? You know, they, they might have, a, you know, thousands of domains, but it, you know, they just they don't have any like fake personas, and it's really frustrating because it's not that hard to create. You can go to Shutterstock, you can go to Design Pickle or whatever you want to do, and get all, uh, you know, get a person and create an image around this person, create a name for this person. What are their likes? What are their their interests? Uh, are, are they on Bumble? I don't know. Like you, you create a persona for each of these individuals. If you're black, you're probably just going to scrape them off of Google, and that works just fine too. Uh, just be a little careful that it's not like a really, really public figure because uh, then it's a little bit too obvious. And then you're going to want to like secure that presence. So um, like people know about Noam. Marketer Center has, a, a, I think, a 
better value of that known type of service for the social foundations. So like from the white hat stuff, we'll just select everything. We're like, you know what, if I'm creating the, the Joe Sanquitz, um, you know, uh, persona, I just get all this shit built for Joe Sanquitz. I'm going to have the Facebook accounts. I'm going to have, you know, 1500 plig, uh, you know, variation accounts, whatever it might be. You just, you just want them all secured because it just, it solidifies that persona's existence. You could do this essentially the same in the black hat, but if you're gonna cut corners, you just get a couple of the major packages so you have those bases covered. You don't necessarily need to go super deep. Um, most uh, influencer networks that I've like infiltrated and played with, uh, they don't really check. I'm gonna take a sip of my scotch here. I'm just refreshing. All right, then we're gonna start growing the persona's uh, uh, presence. Uh, yeah, I'm pitching my own shit in Telefluence. But uh, what you're gonna wanna do here is you're basically wanting to um, just get non-PBM related content on your site. And one way to do that is to underbid on various offers. So like, let's say you have a blog post um, and you see like some trash stuff coming through where they're looking to, um, they're looking for blog links for $5. You, you accept it, even though it's not what you want. You just want some new content that you're gonna be putting on your, on your stuff, and it, it just differentiates it a little bit. Um, further, like if, if you're looking to grow your presence on um, um, you know, Black Hat Method, I, I like Black Hat links. Um, they're pretty good for, for some of their wiki and 2.0 style links. I use that occasionally in ORM practices. They're not gonna pass any sort of sniff test. If someone's looking around like, where'd you get these followers? You know, does this look legitimate or not? But if someone's just looking at raw numbers, it'll pass a, a quick, you know, eye test. You know, the, the whole, you know, debate on eat. You know, we were talking about that years ago. This this would pass the, 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 the five second glance, but not the 30 second glance. Then what I like to do to make uh, you know the PBMs look even more legitimate is add on some e-commerce. Um, you, you can go full bore on like a white hat version and like you know join some networks and actually push products. If if you want like a simplistic method, um, you could uh, do like a, a WooCommerce install, and there is an Amazon integration in the WooCommerce to make it look like you're hosting your own inventory, but you're basically just um, funneling through Amazon's affiliate program. That, that's a that's kind of cool. It takes a little bit of time to set up, um, but uh, it looks uh, significantly more real, especially if the site just has e-commerce kind of bolted on and is like, oh, hey, for my visitors and audience, you can go purchase this product versus like putting it in your face. This is all about e-commerce. It, it, it does add to the experience. Uh, trust me on that. Uh, Shopify also has a similar... Um, similar setup, but it doesn't integrate into WordPress as nicely uh, as the uh, the WooCommerce Amazon one did. Uh, then, you know, for the Black Hat version, you know, you could just, you know, fake it. You just, you know, crop some imagery, make it look like it's a cart. I mean, if, if you don't care, then you really don't care. Uh, after that, uh, we ran some competitive use testing to, uh, to make sure it was trustworthy and like make some quick tweaks. So user insights, uh, that's run by uh, Terry Godier. Um, they have a method where you do like a, like a $5 user video. So you could like uh, throw a 20 buck uh, uh, test in there, uh, have people like navigate the site, you know, like it was it easy to use. And like, if you're really, really into like building out a, 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 a cleanish PBM network, it might be worthwhile to do just to make sure that, you know, the people's initial impressions, these are strangers to you. So you're getting feedback like, what was what was your impression? Like, oh, this looks fake. That's that's a bad thing. You want to change it up. Um, if you are interested in doing it still as a black, I don't think you probably would. But Job Boy, I think, is great for distributed labor. Um, its feedback will not be nearly as great, but you can you can um, you can get a, a couple birds killed with one stone here because you can have them as their project say, okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Google. I want you to type in this phrase. I want you to go to the third second or third page, find my domain, click on it, and then tell me, you know, what color first comes to mind to you. And, and you're basically just having them fuck with rank brain as a method for you to get a little bit of user feedback on your site too. So that, that's fun. 
uh, you can create a subscription revenue model. Again, like the, the overarching goal of this is PBNs are designed primarily to make you money, right? So um, it, it's not just about selling links on the things, try to get more money out of everywhere. So you already layered on basic e-commerce. If you want, you can even like layer on advertising packages with a subscription model. So uh, we did a beta test for Tiny Cart. Um, it's currently not available right now. They are making a lot of changes behind the scenes. But the way it worked was easy. We just dropped in some JavaScript and created the thing like uh, fifty dollars a month to like add your banner here, and you know people put it in their credit card and they buy this stuff. It's insane. Um, you you could do that on Black Hat too. What was cool about it is. Um, charges uh, two percent of of the transaction so if you were to take this little piece of javascript and deploy it on like a hundred thousand domains and there's no commercial activity you didn't pay anything you're only paying for commercial activity so that turned out to be a really interesting skew that i have on my big list of things to do uh to see if i can uh, maximize that further and then of course you want to start uh, uh making use of the people that are coming to the site and looking at you know potentially sponsoring buying advertising buying links from you and like set up some some uh, automated drip campaign so they come in maybe you're going to capture them with something like drip um i'm i'm deeper on intercom right now i'm really playing with that what's cool with intercom is it's fairly easy to get into their startup program whether or not you're even a startup and that's uh, $49 a month. You just have to pass a couple criteria, like um, under a certain number of employees. Um, you can't be at a Series A yet. I think you have to be under a certain revenue amount. But they don't actually verify anything. So um, so you can get intercom for 49 bucks. That's a great way to start. Uh, after you have like 500 um, messages a month, then they'll, they'll, they'll kick you to a higher plan. But that's one way you can create you know, a drip campaign. Otherwise, uh, Drip is still good. Drift is way too expensive, but Drift is really uh, very good um, if you want to go that route. On um, the Black Hat stuff, I mean, you know, you could just throw everyone into a list and just spam them repeatedly in Gmail. And that's probably what most people are going to do anyways, because that's what people seem to do when uh, I get on their lists for their PBNs. Then now that you have a site that is created, it's got some links to it, it's got some traffic to it, it has a persona, and that persona seems to have interest and they're doing things online because you actually spent a little bit of time in one of the influencer networks, now you're going to join every single influencer network you possibly can. Obviously, I want you to join the Telefluence because that's my baby, but there's hundreds of them out there. And like, you know, there is a Pareto rule, 20% generate 80% of the volume. But the reality is the more tentacles that you're spreading out and the more opportunities you're going to get for you to make, uh, so make some cash based on, you know, the, the personas that you created and off of the, the, the more legitimate uh, links you're going to get. And I'll explain a little bit that in a bit. Um, there, there are difficulties uh, when you have, uh, you know, multiple sites. Because uh, not all the networks are going to be set up um, where they'll allow you to have uh, multiple personas, multiple blogs. You're juggling a lot of stuff, so you you might need to uh, go to any of the networks that have you know talent agency capabilities. Uh, we have that. Um, otherwise, you're going to need to create uh, multiple logins, and some of them are going to get a little bit crazy, like Tap Influence. Uh, they cared about this a lot more before Isaiah bought them. Now they don't seem to care about much at all. So absolutely go dump all your stuff into Isaiah. But um, you know they did care about the IP usage for a while. So if you took you know you know 100, 200 domains and you put them all in, and they're all different personas, but they're all the IP, same IP, or you know coming from the same IP as you're logging in, that would trigger something in their system. Uh, Isaiah doesn't seem to have that. So have fun. Um, you could also, you know, just fake a bunch of stuff. Um, if, if, if you're not, if you don't really care about the whole talent agency concept, the whole point of a talent agency is so that you could have 500 personas and you could have one person, like a talent ang manager, managing all the opportunities for these people and collecting money and distributing it behind the scenes as you see fit. On the Black Hat version, you just have uh, you know, email forwarding set up. 
So you, you can still get it all done. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's just, it's a little bit more difficult. And like, I, I have noticed as like, you know, the administrator of a network where some people definitely see it as a red flag, like, hey, um, I sent this PayPal through. And I noticed when I had a complaint, it went to the same end node as someone else I had a complaint for, you have people gaming your network. And that's a pain in the ass, so avoid that. So back, back from the tangent, you're gonna to wanna to put these in all the influ uh, influencer networks as you can. Um, if the quality is too low, you are gonna get knocked out. Uh, there are some that don't care about quality at all. Blog Dash is one of them, so you can throw them in Blog Dash. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to create um, some offers uh, where, uh, you know, in, in, the white, in the white hat version, uh, you're, you're gonna get pitched at some point. And you're, you're gonna to wanna to make it uh, very upfront that you're easy to work with. One, one thing you do, like when you're being pitched and you're accepting something as a white hat, go, go beyond what they ask. You know, say like, you know, if they're beginning a blog post, like, thank you, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this blog first, what you do, then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put it on all my social accounts, even though you didn't ask me to. And, you know, I will amplify some of those, uh, those, uh, those posts. There's, there's a reason why you do this. Um, no one, I say no one, very few people will go out of their way to do this initially, and it will make you a lot more money down the road. On the black hat version, you're probably not going to go through all that effort. You're probably just looking for speed and automation. So you're probably just going to throw everything you can in every network you can, uh, whatever minimum requirements on length you're going to do. Like if, if it's a if it's a 300 word post, you're probably doing 301 words. If you were the white hat, you're probably doing you know 750 or whatever. You're doing whatever it took to make a great post. You're you're going to also price what your minimums are below average. Because at, at, at least at that point, as a black hat, you don't care. You're like, okay, hey, look, you know what? You're looking for, uh, you know, your offer is for $30 posts, and I'm saying I'll do this stuff for 20 bucks. You know, for someone that takes that, they don't have as much legitimacy in complaining about the lower quality because you already, you know, tacitly explained that by virtue of your setting your market rate below average that you're going to turn in below average work. But then you, you know you're going to be handling these influencer transactions. So there's a fat guy that I know wearing uh, you know a vaporcade hat and holding up some protein powder and could stand to lose oh, about 75 pounds there. Uh, you know if if if, if you're a white hat, um, you're you're wanting to take this product as it comes in and you're going to give uh, you know the 100 percent experience. You're going to be uh, you know taking pictures of the unboxing. You're going to use real photos unless you know they, they give you photos to work with, and like you're either going to write it yourself or you're going to outsource it. We outsourced it, and we outsourced it to someone that could write it way better than I could. On the black hat, you're probably just throwing it to your VA and like get it to me as fast as you can. Run it through a damn uh, you know content spinner. I don't care. And so you're you're basically your your gold is black hat here is just the speed of it. Remember, like they paid twenty when they they could have paid thirty. You're turning it around twenty four hours. That still may be okay. Then, you know, um, for, for the white hat, you know, we, we talked about going the, 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 the whole nine yards, going the extra distance. You know, you can automate some of this, obviously. You know, you can get set up on Buffer, um, and you could put in, you know, a couple different social uh, accounts at once per persona. So if you have multiple emails because you have all these different sites, you can use this, this method, and you can put um, them all on the free account. Um, if you're black hat, you could just do the same thing and just like repeatedly cancel and re-up. I mean, that gets old and it's probably a more of a waste of money than just putting in the one thing and leaving it. Um, there is a, uh, a plugin, uh, the WP, uh, it's called the Access Share Social Auto Post, 21 bucks. Um, one, I, th I think, I need to test this one further, but I think what you're able to do here that makes it kind of special is you get it set up on one site, and the way that, that it's working through the post database, you could essentially have it on one site, but use it for your entire portfolio. The only problem with that is it, it is kind of a signal. So like if anything's breaking, it would be uh, fairly easy to trace it back to the point of origin where it broke. Um, so maybe don't get super cheap. Um, otherwise, 21 bucks, and you can auto post anything to your social accounts. The amplification, um, 
I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll still, I'll still get to why you do it. But like, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. You could just, you could go, again go to like, you know, Facebook ads and do some penny traffic or you know, AdWords and do some you know, really cheap traffic. You could go and take that same post and put it back into the network in which you just got worked on, and basically just do like a five dollar amplifier or one dollar amplify. You know, you're you're gonna want the real, real cheap stuff. The 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 I put in the rule of three here. Like you know, um, if you're gonna be getting extra money because you were above average rate for the the work that you're doing, uh, you could be willing to spend a little bit extra on the amplification of it, uh, and it's it's in order to secure that future business. On on black hat stuff, like I don't even know you necessarily need to amplify. Um, you, you could use the this particular ADSS30, uh, uh, the mini candy deal. It did work. I mean, it, it's a lot like the Black Hat Links one, where it's just real quick, um, you know, activity, but it's it's pretty useless activity. At least by putting it back into an influencer network and getting you know authentically shared stuff, um, it holds up to any some scrutiny. Uh, so the, the sweeteners, like we are offering to like to amplify and do a little bit more. Uh, like if you did like the um, the host gator uh, hosting and you got that free AdWords coupon, then you just look. You're, you're really only looking to uh, to get the ad live to take a screenshot of it to show that you are sending traffic to them because it's, it's going to blow them away that you actually cared so much about their project to do that. But Black Hat's just going to screenshot someone else's ad word or just you know modify it and then say that they did it or you know do a, a promoted post ad with one penny and then say that they did it. The reason you do all that is because you could absolutely upsell someone. These people are gonna have your contact information. And if you deliver on something that was high quality, push them. Like, hey, did you see that subscribe button on, on my site? I'm glad you really like this content. I would love to do one of these a month uh, for you for the next six to 12 months. You will get at least half of the deals to do this. And if, if you offer them like a 20% off to commit to like a, a year contract, you're gonna lock up some good stuff. And there's a good reason why you're gonna wanna do this. Because the, the type of content you're gonna be asked to create is gonna be coming primarily from brands. This is so much better than the average Joe Sinkwitz payday loan site that I would be offer, asking you to purchase. You know, and like getting links to my payday portfolio is not doing your PBM much, uh, you know, much good. But getting something from you know like a Folgers Coffee and Starbucks and you know like real brands that is going to benefit you a lot more long term. On the upsell in the Black Hat version, uh, one uh, I, I've seen a couple agencies doing this now, and it's kind of funny. Um, they, I'm pretty sure it's a PBM. I haven't I've sat down to see like if it actually is a PBM, but they have a lot of sites and and they have a lot of personas. And one thing that they're offering is like, hey. Just let us know if you like any of the other existing posts that we have. We'll just modify it and drop in your anchor text. You know, here's here's our here's our you know our rates, and that does work. Uh, you're going to want to increase your own personal utility over time because you did go through all this effort to build the stuff up. You can, you know, start to treat it like a, a traditional PBM. You can you can inject posts a bit, you know, to your relevant properties at least. You're not going to want to interlink everything like an idiot. That's the quickest way to get things all burned down. You just want to recoup your costs a little bit on the personal marketing expense, and then you could use those brand reviews as the essential like cloud cover to your activities. Um, if you're Black Hat, you probably don't care because it was a free domain and it's on a, a close to free host. You're probably just going nuts. If you are too aggressive, it will get burned. Then you're, you know, after a period of time, you've built it up, you know, 12, 24 months, you're probably at a point where you're you're looking to sell it. So if you were meticulous with all your earnings, you can wrap it up, uh, put it on Flippa, and set your market, uh, your asking price to three to five times earnings, depending upon, you know, uh, how hot the niche is. And update your earnings periodically. What's cool about this is it's such a passive thing to do. You set it up, you, uh, you, you set up what your... Uh, what you would take, and then you just keep operating it as is. 
eventually, you know, not all the time, but you know, eventually people will come in, they'll bid, and they'll make an interesting enough bid to take it off your hands. And now you just turn this into, uh, you know, uh, into a nice, uh, you know, outcome in addition to the income stream you already have. Non-garbage sites do get picked up. And like they'll get picked up by other SEOs like us too, right? And like if if I see something like this out in the wild and it's in a niche that I know that I need to be in right now, I'm gonna do it because you probably saved me twelve, you know, twelve months of time. There, there's a premium that I have to attach to that. If you're black hat and you cut too many corners, you're not gonna be able to sell for a whole lot unless you're lying and defrauding people. And I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, you can go into like the black hat world PBN seller uh, list. Um, uh, it's site flipping. You put it on eBay, you could try. I don't think it works out too well, though. Uh, thanks for listening to uh, th this here. It was funny, uh, you know, when I was pitched, uh, I said, hey, what do you want me to talk about? Do you want me to talk about just like everything negative SEO or do you want me to talk about PBNs? Like, PBNs. So that's what we did. Um, let's do a giveaway. Uh, I, I think um, uh, if you want, why don't you ask a, a question to the audience uh, that's listening? If anyone happens to be listening still, uh, they might have tuned out by now. And whoever has the best question, I'll uh, give me their email and I'll hook them up with a lifetime Intel Fluence account. Cool. And I'll drink my scotch. <laughs> awesome. You guys can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, good. Just got home. You're a little bit quieter, I guess, but. My throat started to hurt just hearing all over talk that last hour. I'm like, I feel so bad for the guy that I should be drinking scotch to help him out. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I'd have a drink, but I still have, uh, what, 16 hours to sit here? That probably wouldn't go well. Yeah, we, well, cracked, around, we cracked around this time last year and, uh, I was pretty bad by three in the morning, so I'm gonna try and wait till three in the morning, and then cool. maybe it'll get better. <laughs> so, do you have like a coffee scale where you like you have, you have a full cup of coffee, then you have like a full cup of like ninety five percent coffee, five percent like brandy or something like that, and then you slowly shift it? <laughs> you have, you have a, what's your plan here? <laughs> um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hotel, so whatever they can bring me from downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. I'm trying to see how I can turn up my microphone here. Uh... Your mic sounds fine. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. Screw it then. Um, so, who so has some questions for Joe? A Mr. A Espresso or Miss or whoever um, says, "What are the main variables to consider when evaluating PBM offers?" Evaluating PBN offers in terms of it existing in an influencer network, or like that's that's a little vague, unfortunately. Like, are you are you talking about like? I, I guess I guess answer that first. I guess um, what's a good offer and what's a bad offer on an influencer network, and then if they want to get some more depth, okay. they can follow up in the chat. Well, I, I think like so long as you have put a little thought into where you're setting your your minimums um in terms of like what your commercial activity is worth then a bad offer is essentially anything that's like drastically below that it's so like you know um i i still get pitched bad offers on my own network where like hey um i saw that you had an amazon account I want to send you some leggings. Will you uh, will you review this leggings? And also, I have vaginal cream. Will you do that? <laughs> I'm not a really good reviewer for you on this particular product. That would be a bad offer. It's also bad if they're trying to like you know um, I'm not going to pay you a whole lot, and maybe I'm just going to give you a partial coupon code. Not a good offer. If if it's if it's a monetary offer that I've already determined like you know as you're starting out. Maybe you're you're willing to accept only like ten bucks or only twenty bucks, something low. If it's at least within striking distance of that, okay, because you're just looking to build up the site. After the the network is mature, you've raised your rates anyways. So now maybe you're up to you know two hundred bucks a post. And if the offer comes in for that twenty, that, that is now a bad offer. So I think a lot of it has to do with the the market economics. Hopefully, that's what the question was about. 
No, yes, maybe. Yeah, well, we haven't got a follow-up question, so okay. I, I think I think you must have nailed it. Um, you said thanks. So yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, Ma Manuel Laura says PBN's rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> SEO admin two says I was a mess last year. Um, thanks, thanks SEO admin two, whoever you are. Um, Oliver says he should have had a little whiskey too. <laughs> I'm definitely drinking. man. Definitely. Have it for you, Oliver. You have to pour yourself another one, Joe. To uh... no, 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 no. <laughs> it was for theatrics. That's all. <laughs> oh, it's really, it's really, um, it's really some old tea in there or something, right? No, no. It, it, it's just, <laughs> it just, I feel bad about having Johnny eighteen in this giant supermarket, you know, gas station cup. You know, just the wrong cup for it. it. It should be in some fine crystal. I should be sitting in a nice overstuffed leather chair, maybe a cigar, possibly a campfire. Or like well, next, 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 next year, um, you can do your presentation outdoors with a uh, campfire cigar. And <laughs> right, well, you're you're going to get the camera set up and come to me, I guess. Um, yeah, let's do it around some conference we're both at. That seems simpler than I know. <laughs> that would be easy. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything from you, Gary? I don't really have any questions, but I also missed. Uh... Most it was yeah. whatever yeah. you missed that was the better part <laughs> just so you know like the part you stayed for yeah i lost steam at that point hmm. no i mean it, <laughs> well it, you were you were going at you were going at quite a pace so was, yeah uh, you know it, it, it's funny because it's it's not a complex topic but it's something that i find odd because i like to work in multiple dimensions whenever i possibly can and so when i see someone that has an asset and they're only using it for one specific purpose, that means they're leaving money on the table from right. all the other directions. Like, why are they not contributing it into something that's a possible sale down the road? Why are they not trying to squeeze out money for it on advertising? Why are they not trying to get e-commerce revenue? Why are they not trying to put it in influence networks? Mm -hmm. Like, it all comes together. Like, just be more holistic and look at all these channels and just use them. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing um, the typical revenue, if you build one of these out really well, you're making a lot more per site than you would just selling, you know, $80 links one off to random SEOs until it gets burned and then starting again. This seems like it's got more revenue potential from. It also extends the life of it too. Like those, those brand requests are pretty neat because you're, it, it's not a negative signal if it's on theme and I'm linking to stuff that is a true brand. And it's not because I'm linking to a true brand because I also want to sneak in a link to the thing that, you know, that paid me to do it. It's I'm linking to the right thing that I'm supposed to be linking to. And so it, you're able to last just longer going that route. Um, and also it's funny too, because like, you know, if you actually put in real time to developing out these personas, you start to find that you can get paid more just to do the influencer shit than you do for the links. And that's kind of a sad reality too, because you get to the point like, okay, should I shift my focus? In some cases, yes, in some cases, no, but at least it's an opportunity to make that decision. Yeah, it's interesting because we have a real site that we've barely started on the SEO for and already brands are prepared to pay like $150 for what appears to be nothing. Um, like so uh, a no follow link with an advertiser disclosure at the top of it, and you're thinking, wait a minute, this is uh, <laughs> this site barely exists yet. Get a year yeah, contract, okay. come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm realizing that we sh we should just give up on the real site. Let's get another one of these on the burner and get them all on influencer marketplaces. <laughs> you, you know, uh, another another takeaway that I got from you know because I really only got into the SaaS world about three years ago. As the deeper I got into SaaS, I started to see how I should be using a lot of those methodologies elsewhere and everything else I'm doing within an overall marketplace. And that that's where like that whole push for annual plans. It's really big in SaaS because it locks in and reduces churn. I was like, you know, shit, like why, why did I not know or like really think about that deeper back when we used to sell just basic ad space on a website portfolio? We would, I mean, we would have had way less stress and you could spend more time hunting for new advertisers. Even if you take a 20% discount on a year contract, mm -hmm. it frees up so much and it yeah. gives you much better cash projections. Right. It's, it's little things like retention, I think about way more than I used to. 
I mean, obviously, we all, we all care about monetization, but now I think about more like, how do I get that guy back again? How do I keep him coming back forever? Mm -hmm. I mean, like you so, do 20%, I would happily give a 20% discount knowing I don't have to worry about getting someone back for a year or whatever that number is, two years or... Yeah, yeah, if they're advertising every single month and you know that you've got that for the whole year, 20% is a good deal. Absolutely. And you could still put it on auto renewal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you yeah. know, in, in some cases you might get the second year. And yeah. like, you know, by the time it comes up, like, well, yeah, it was a 30 day out. You know, you're in it for this year. Yep. Yep. Talk okay. to me again in November. <laughs> just just insist on Visa. Yeah. <laughs> rules. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I'm curious how that's going to affect a lot of us. Like in, in the SaaS world, we all got scared. But then we started looking at it and Stripe is like, yeah, we already abide by all the stuff. We're very quick to refund anyway, so we don't, they don't care about it. I guess for, yeah, the, the auto. Well, it's more just, it's more just the awareness because before if they wanted it refunded, like Stripe might be nice, but if you approach, you know, people would be like, oh, I've got to charge it back. It's going to be a hassle. Like, I guess just the process is going to make people more willing because they know it's just an instant decision. That's right. I'm having a flashback to when I was talking to you guys about Intel Phone. You're like, why should we have a credit card? Like, we haven't used a credit card in years. I was like, this exists in the UK? Like, what the hell's going on? Like, that, it's, a, I, it's a different world. A, a corporate, corporate debit card. I, um, I, I actually, uh, I, I've got, I, I, got a, I got a company. Well, actually, we both, for the, both the US and UK company, both have um, corporate Amexes now. So IntelliFluence uh, got Amex some sales and uh, Garrett a free business class flight to Europe in points. So nice, <laughs> nice. that's awesome. We were, we were, it was kind of stupid of us. We we're both busy collecting personal points and then using a corporate debit card. So it was uh, like, what are you doing? Like, it's another. There's another free forty thousand points here for me. You know. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I mean. Oh, what was I going to say? So from your position as um, obviously a network owner, as well as someone who does um, marketing, to put this uh, in yeah, the yeah. Uh, white hat marketing. Um, so you're on both sides of the coin. I mean, how do you feel about it from a network owner? Because you've got the same problem as yeah. someone who burns someone who burns their PBN network too fast. I imagine as a marketplace, you, you kind of want this activity when people are doing it sensibly and there's a good transaction happening, but you don't want it when there's idiots not doing it well and there's a bad transaction happening. How are you managing that? Yeah. So desire to no, it's a, it's actually a really good question. And so we have kick ass logic. And so like uh, our you know it, it's almost kind of mean to do it, but like um, we can catch stuff with our administration faster than most others. So you know um, it's the, the quality's not going to hurt as much. But also like the way that we talk about setting up that white hat stuff, that's not to the detriment of a brand. So that, that's actually really clean. And like, if, if you think about like, what's, what's faker, Kylie Jenner or some personality you created, they're both fake. It's just that you don't, you're not gonna cost nearly as much as Kylie Jenner is. It's like, you, know, you, you start to back it out in these weird juxtapositions of morality. I don't have a problem with the white hat method. And I think it has a really good place. I think the brands can benefit from it. The black hat, like going like pure black hat, it's not going to work very well, especially in the larger networks. The ones that are just kind of getting started off the ground, and they're just really hungry for growth. They'll accept them in, but then it, they're, they're not going to get picked for as many offers either. It's like the better of an experience you create, the more money you're simply going to make. So it, I feel weird because I was a huge black hat, and now I'm a lot more white hat than I used to be. I, I feel old. <laughs> well, you had some uh, you had some interesting times during the uh, initial uh, early days, bad times for SEO. So I guess uh, <laughs> the desire not to return is uh, is strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that I would necessarily. You know, it goes back to you know working in multiple dimensions. I don't know that I would specifically set out and say I'm going to create a network that's only going to be for SEO, just because I, I have so little trust now in in the in the major players that remain. That you know I need to make sure that I'm properly hedging my revenue sources, just as a yeah, business perspective. Yeah. You have no, to. we're we've been really the last year and a half 
focusing on doing the same. Now, I, uh, I, I guess one of the quickest ways is to go and like, you know, uh, social ad arbitrage and whatnot. And that, that seems to do pretty well for most, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting five years for the industry, I think. Um, there's a lot of challenges ahead um, in SEO. And there's a lot of um, strange people in this industry as well. Um, who do yeah, strange things. No shit, man. You talk about the weird negativity on Twitter. I'm like, oh my God, keep me out of this conversation. Right. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. You've got, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. We, we, we've we avoided getting into this particular one on the on our YouTube show as well, just because we, we gave it yeah. a mention because it was in the news. But it's also crazy. You just. It, uh, yeah, it's like something. I don't want to be a part of in the future at this point. It's like, why is it just getting dumb? Just be cool, help other people out. And everything's right. fine. Yeah, and don't be don't be a strange sex pest. I mean, <laughs> I mean I, I'm going to have uh, to write that down now. For you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, it, uh, it was a very um, different industry back then, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, we, we don't have to go into it. You yeah. know, something. Yeah, yeah. Going back to like payment processing and stuff and digital marketing, I, you know, you, for as long as PayPal has been around, everyone, there's always horror stories of PayPal, you know, s stealing internet marketers' money and all that junk. And, you know, it's happened legitimately, but uh, there was a, some Facebook group the other day, you know, asking, how much money do you actually leave on PayPal? And, you know, I, I just made a comment. We've, process significant amount of money on paypal and we've never really had an issue i think we've been frozen once for a day and just steve sent in a tax document and that was fine um but i guess paypal is cracking down again because a lot of these people offering courses for like hundred dollars a month or something or whatever the number is they say a, a no question refund guarantee if you want a refund you get it same day, same second, and they are honoring the refund. But what happens is these courses are so bad, their refund rate is like 80%. So they'll do like 10 grand in revenue, refund, refund $8,000 of it, and PayPal's like, great, you did a lot of refunds, but now we got all these, you know, this is kind of weird. Um, you, you know what? They should be on Stripe. Yeah. Because like, a, at least with Stripe, like you're... Um when the refund exists, like you're not getting charged an additional fee. Now again, mm -hmm. they'll, probably, they'll probably freak out if you have like an 80% refund rate. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they would. Yeah. I mean, you could still mitigate it around, or like, sure. you, or what you could do is you could turn it into like a chain transaction, where like, hey, you know what? You're going to pay me via this method, but I um I submit my paper my uh, I submit my refunds via PayPal, and therefore there's no connection. And then you get into mass payments with PayPal and you just process all your refunds. You're like, I got 20 today. <laughs> well, the, the rest there is they charge it back and try they and get do. a double refund. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they could. And like, then, yeah, that, that's fucked up. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> it's always something. Yeah, like that's the problem with fraud. Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta eat it on the chin and refund it by uh, how you got it. and. Yeah, I just um, thought that was really interesting that these people selling the courses have such a high refund rate, and it's like... Well, the clever ones, like uh, uh, Mr. Brunson and stuff, they, they drip the content out, so it's like a 90-day course, but you get, you get like a, a, an episode a week, and, you know, the better stuff's before the 30 days, you know, and then the oh. refund guarantees come. And then it doesn't really matter what comes after the 30 days. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not saying you know. Right, right. Maybe, right. I, maybe it just looked less good after. But... <laughs> Have you guys played around with that digitalmarketer.com at all? No, I haven't. So it's, it's the same guys that own like the traffic and conversion conference, and like they, it, it's really interesting if you look into it because it's some of the best funnel marketing that I've ever seen. But it has the same issue that you're talking about, where once you get to the actual product. It's complete dog shit courses where it's like, I'll teach you SEO and it's five seconds. You need meta tags. Like, holy shit, really? Yeah. And like and then yeah. you're on like an you know, auto charge situation where like if, if the people that put all this effort into the marketing put half as much effort into the actual product, they will make a lot more money long term. And it's such a hard lesson to push down people's throats. 
Remember um, the wonderful Quick Sprout University, speaking I of do. author, on a, where, where oh. the the previously respectable Brian Dean sold his soul for however much money Neil Patel gave him to record those awful videos. <laughs> and now Neil launched his own agency. Mm. I'm sure his new content's better than that stuff. I, I, I obviously haven't subscribed to his new courses, but... I don't, I don't know who he's stealing it from. No? Okay. Sorry? Sorry. It was, it was kind no, of, no, I didn't... It was a Neil Patel joke, but uh, oh. it'll be recorded. <laughs> I'll get a, a nasty email, I'm sure. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, uh, allegedly. If you just say allegedly, or okay. like, like, uh, like, like, like the Trump does, you know. I people have been saying. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but oh. it just sounds like the kind of thing he would do. And then you then you cover all this. <laughs> yeah, and then say huge a few times and um, paint yourself orange or whatever, and you've got the whole the whole story covered. We, we, we try not to talk about that too much on the side of the clock. It's, just, it's a little close to home. <laughs> hey, how's the Brexit going? Too soon. Hashtag too <laughs> <Right>. soon. <laughs> um, I, I'm not really sure Brexit's going anywhere, to be honest. Um, I think we're going to have a like a 17-year extension or something where they argue some more. That's probably for the best. Probably going to be a couple of extra general elections. Um, both parties' leaders will fall. You know, just the usual stuff, you know, nothing nothing special. Well, no matter how bad we feel, at least we have some company in this misery. True. <laughs> I don't know. I try and not read about it anymore on any side. Um, so it's, uh, it's all good fun at the minute. The thing you've just got to remember is look at look at the look at the history books and all the uh, all the times when whatever side I always say this to people, whatever side they're on in politics, look at all the times you would have been super pissed off before. And whoever that person is, you barely remember them now. They're all politicians are so ephemeral, ephemeral, they just come and go and you blink so. an eye, really. Yeah. Well, you think you think uh, you think Theresa May's over here plotting to become uh, the next Thatcher and be here for 15 yeah. years or something. I hope uh, not. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think they're going to call her Teresa the Great, but, you know. Teresa the Great. Well, they're saying, they're saying they might get rid of her before the next party conference, so I'm, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for that one and uh, <laughs> see what happens. We had a question from an individual named JD. Not sure if I missed it as I came on a few minutes late. But is this all built on new domains or expired auctions? Question mark. Uh, this, this was primarily uh, for the testing. We built it all on new stuff. So on the white hat versions, uh, we, we determined what the niche should be, just based on doing some uh, uh, some gap analysis on Ahrefs and Spy Food to figure out the niche, and then want to GoDaddy to find domain availability and then purchase those on name. Uh, for the Black Hat version, you just go to uh, uh, Niche uh, Directory, I believe, uh, Niche Laboratory. And then from there, there, there's a couple different free host and free domain type services you could do. So it was all on new stuff. But like, if, if you were going to go the, 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 the paid existing route, um, you'd have to be more careful because you don't know the full history of it. So like for a pure mm. test, we had to go really new. If you're going... Um, if you're going the paid route, then that would actually be a really interesting model to find where you're really good already at purchasing existing sites for PPN and then layering on all the other monetization methodologies and traffic inflows. That would be pretty cool. I mean, that's definitely not an, inter uh, an uh, industry that I'm personally going to get in. I, just, I don't have enough time in the day for anything like that. But I could see someone making a good living doing it. Cool. Who's on next? Any uh, Thomas Small from FE International. Oh, nice, nice. Well, yeah, he could talk a heck of a lot more about selling the sites than using Flipper. Yeah. He'd be like, no, no, no. Yeah. So we'll just uh, we'll start off with the question. We've uh, we've just had um, we've just had Joe on talking about uh, making up some fake sites. Uh,